Yay! Yay! Okay, another classic problem has to do with um, a rod that's pivoted about one end that you just release and you just let it fall. So let's try that. So initially I've got this uh, rod, this horizontal rod, and then it's pivoted, uh, pinned at one end and I just let it fall. And so, whoop, it falls to where it's hanging uh, vertically. Okay, so what we can do is figure out what the acceleration um, at the end point of the rod. So in other words, the acceleration of a point over here. Let's figure out what that acceleration is um, because it'll turn out to be something uh, kind of interesting. Okay, so let's see. Um, what is acceleration for the end of the rod? All right. Um, so how we're going to do it is go back to our rotational form of Newton's second law. Torque is equal to I times alpha, um, which is going to be equal to uh, I times as it falls, we can go ahead and do our um, alpha at the end of the rod. Our A is going to be related to alpha in this way. It's just going to be A divided by how far away from the axis we are. Normally, like we said, if it's a wheel that's rolling without slipping, it's like A over R, right? But the end of the rod is L away. It's not really R away. So the connection looks like this, A over L. Um, all right, what's providing the torque? What's providing the torque is gravity, and gravity is acting at the midpoint of the rod, the center of mass of the rod, right? And the force is just going to be m times g. So the torque is just going to be mg, that's the force, and it's acting at L over 2, and the angle is 90 degrees, right? So sine of 90 is, is 1. I don't have to worry about that. So this is going to be equal to I. What's the I of the rod? It's going to be one third ML squared. And then I got an A over L. So once again, the all the L's go away. And then I can solve for A. So the acceleration of that endpoint, uh, it looks like it's going to be, uh, let's see, the mass cancels out too, right? So it's just going to be 3G uh over two three halves g 1.5 g that's kind of a cool answer um so if you were to balance like a like i don't know like a penny or something if you were to put a penny at the end of this rod and drop the rod then what would happen if you drop them both then what would happen is the rod would come out from under the penny the penny couldn't keep up right because the penny falls at g the acceleration of gravity uh, but the end of the rod is falling at one of one and a half g so it's accelerating out from under the penny um but it's different that acceleration is different all the way across the rod it depends on how far we are away from the center right points way up here near the pin are going to accelerate a lot slower so there's the interesting phenomenon that there's a stress along uh that rod that as it falls um there's going to be a stress on this thing uh, or maybe it's a strain. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, there's a differential force on this thing that may make it break as it falls because some parts are accelerating faster than others. And so there's a little bit of a strain because it's got a, you know, the, the, the internal composition of the rod has to sort of keep up with that differential force. Um, that's just the initial acceleration. Uh, the problem is as it falls, that gravitational torque is going to be in a different direction. Uh, that R is going to be in a different direction. Here's, here's what I'm saying. It's going to be in a different direction. So when the rod gets to be here, for example, now the gravitational torque is pointed down, but the R is pointed there. So now we have our sine theta that we have to take into account. So it gets more complicated as the thing falls. That's just the initial acceleration. So if we wanted to find uh, how fast is the end moving, when the rod is vertical if you wanted to find that 
um, it gets more complicated uh, if you wanted to do it just strictly based on forces. But fortunately, there's sort of an easy shortcut. Let's use energy methods. So what we're going to say is the initial position of the rod is when it's horizontal up here, right? And the center of mass of the rod at this position is L over 2 higher than it is when it's in the vertical position, right? And it's the center of mass of the rod that we're going to worry about. So the energy method says that the initial energy equals the final energy. Right? So what is the initial energy? Well, just at the point where we let it go, it doesn't have any kinetic. It's just all potential. And the potential energy at that point is just going to be its mgh if it were a point particle. Right? But this is going to be mg times how high is the, we're just talking about the center of mass now. How high is the center of mass above the final position? L over 2. There we go. So that's its initial energy. The final energy is now the center of mass is at, we're going to call this down here, that's the zero point. All right. So it's all kinetic, the final one. So the final kinetic, what is rotational kinetic energy? It's just one half I omega squared. So we'll do that. Um, okay. So mg L over 2 is equal to one half what is i the moment of inertia around that pin is just going to be one third ml squared and then omega now we put in the connection between omega and v so this is going to be v over that length l that's going to be the speed at that point all right uh, oh and that's squared right so it looks like uh, I'm going to have uh, the, the M's cancel everywhere. Um, so this is going to be a G. L okay, do the L's cancel? Let's see, I got one L on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, that L cancels with that L because they're both squared. So it looks like I'm going to have, on the right-hand side, all I've got left is just V squared over 6. So I'm going to move the 6 over, and so I'm going to have... V is just going to be 3GL, right? Uh, let's see, did I forget any factors? No, that's going to be it. So the speed of the object, the speed of the end of the bar is just going to be 3GL. Uh, very cool. That's faster, by the way, than if it was undergoing free fall from a height uh, L, because free fall, remember, uh, from a long time ago, that was root 2GH. 2g times the initial height so it's going to be falling faster um, which is what we maybe would think if it initially starts accelerating faster than gravity um, cool so this is kind of a cool problem 